Happy Sunday fun day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Heather Vitale, and welcome back to Post Time. During our half hour together, in addition to showing you action on the racetrack, we like to expand your mind with some equine education. Dr. Christopher Balt joins us today with some important info on the fetlock joint. And obviously, this is a feature that any horse lover of any breed will find useful. Where is the fetlock joint? The fetlock joint is in the lower part of the leg. It's where the cannon bone and the first pastern or the long pastern come together. What type of problems can occur at this joint? The joint itself is a, is a highly movable joint and with the impact that the joint's under in the harness racing industry, you can have two types of injuries. One are going to be more like an acute type injury where we'd say sprains and strains and some fractures and then there can be an accumulative type injury where you might have things like osteoarthritis or degenerative changes. What should I look for in my horse? So one of the most important things to take a look for is you want to look for some type of lameness or some sort of gait issues. Maybe the horse is not landing correctly or it's not striding all the way out. Or you can also see that there's a, uh, a difference in height between the two fetlock joints. If the, if the flexor tendon is stretched, overstretched on one side, one fetlock joint will appear lower than the other. Or when the, when the, when the joint is actually flexed and extended, one is going to look obviously um, uh, less than the, uh, than the normal joint as it moves. The joint itself, as we said, it's going to be between the cannon and the, and the long pastern. We should be able to flex the joint all the way up. And you can see this guy is a little bit stiff. We should be able to bring the, the plantar surface of the heel all the way up. So he's got a little stiffness in this joint. And so one of the things we always want to do when we take a, take a, um, do a little treatment on joints like this, and I always get the owners to see if they can actually flex the joint, extend the joint, flex the joint, and what I can feel in him is a little bit of crepitus, and you can maybe see my thumb popping back and forth. So because he's been running for a little while, he does have some, a little bit of minor tendon issues here. But what I ask the owner to do is maybe bend the flex, fetlock joint and then counter stretch the, the, ex, um, the extensor flexor tendon complex this way. Bend it, flex it, bend it, flex it. Just like a, a, a normal athlete um, needs to be stretched before and after its performance, I think horses do real well when this joint is maintained and managed properly. What is the cause for fetlock issues? We know that about 60, per, 60 to 70 percent of the weight of a horse is carried on the front feet, you know, and as we're asking them to uh, move along down the racetrack, they're stretching and pulling and stretching and pulling, so they're, they're doing a lot of flexing, extending, flexing, extending. Depending upon the angle of the heel, depending upon the way the horse is trained, you can have an over-exaggeration of the extension of the joint itself, causing issues to the, um, the synovial part of the joint, the tendons, or actually the synovitis can occur, which is an inflammation that occurs in the sheath that surrounds the tendons. So these guys are really prone to having a tendonitis of the, of the front uh, fetlock joints. What is the first step in treatment? Usually the first step in treatment of a horse is you want to get the veterinary involved. You know, you want to double check. Obviously you've had good farrier care, so we know that there's not any kind of thing hidden within the hoof. But the, the, the most important thing is to have a good veterinary and take a look at it. Oftentimes the vet may have to do an x-ray to determine if there's any kind of bony pathology. Chips in the ankle and small fractures are very common. You know, the skeletal system of horse really doesn't fully form until somewhere between five and seven years. And sometimes race, horses start a little younger than that, as we know. So they still are cartilaginous in these joints. As a result, when you overstress cartilage, you can cause small tears in the cartilage, you can cause small ligamentous injuries and trauma. What should I do if cleared by a veterinarian? Managing the fetlock joint is very important. A couple of things that we want to do is we want to make sure that, um, that some stretches are done where we actually stretch, flex the joint, extend the joint, and we work the tendons. The, especially the digital um, flexor tendons are on the back. There's a superficial one and a deep one. They're involved in um, bending the fetlock joint, so they're going to be back in this area here. So getting a good stretch like you may do before a run, after a run. If you start to see signs of inflammation, it's always good to cool the joints after 
um, the horse trains. I know that a lot of times they'll put coolers on the knees, but they don't always remember to do a little bit lower. Um, secondarily, sometimes when they, we start to notice some crepitus in the joint, there are some good joint supplements. You know, we use some things like a glucosamine or something like a devil's claw or something to help the, um, the joints heal up. Tying it in with some of the issues with stress and, and nutrition, knowing that a high starch or high sugar diet um, can also create an inflammatory response to these joints that are very susceptible. Keeping a very good uh, eye on the, the, the length of the toe and the angle here is very important. When a horse's angles are off or the toes are too long, it puts a tremendous amount of stress on the joint. So this is the farrier's business to make sure that the hoof is not just pretty, but it's balanced. I see this a lot in racehorses. The longer the toe is, the more the horse has to lift up its foot to run. And the more it lifts up its foot, it, it creates greater stress on the biceps tendon, and but then as it plants, it puts greater stress on the tendons that actually bend and flex. So we want to make sure that the hoof angles are correct, and you want to make sure that the shoe is correct. We want to make sure that there's been some stretching of the, of the fetlock joint and the supporting ligaments and structures. Is there anything I can do at my barn to prevent or help the fetlock joint? As I was saying, I think you have to have a team. You know, I think the team consists of, obviously we know there's the owner and there's the trainer of the horse. But we also know there's the farrier. We want to make sure that there's good communication between the three. We also have a veterinarian involved who knows if there's any kind of pathology that's going to be found within the joint and that could decide maybe the horse is not healthy to run this week. We also know there's other types of therapy. You know, obviously being a chiropractic physician, we can do manipulation on the fetlock joint as we can any of the joints of the body. We also understand the mechanism of the joint and the muscles that surround the joint so we can do some stretching and some deep tissue work. There's also some people who use things like MagnaWave or the PEMF therapy that give benefit. But one of the deepest penetrating um, therapies right now is laser. So many of the barns are using laser uh, therapy which actually helps uh, repair um, the supportive structures. Thanks so much, Dr. Bolt. It's always so great having the doctor on post time to learn more about our beautiful four-legged family members. If you would like more info, just log on to his website at drbolt.com. He cares for all types of animals at his office in Long Neck, Delaware. Plus, he makes barn calls. We appreciate his time to be on our show with so many great informative features.